Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. For Wednesday, September the 14th, I'm your host, Victor Manash. On today's show, we're taking a look at the effect of rising interest rates on virtually all real estate value-add projects. Whether it's a straightforward value-add project on an existing apartment complex or new construction, all of these value-add projects usually start with conventional bridge loans at the beginning, and then at some point, once the project is stabilized, they convert to permanent financing. On today's show, we're going to do some math so you can see the impact on the underwriting of these projects. It will clearly show why so many projects are getting canceled in the current rising interest rate environment. These numbers are coming directly out of our own underwriting software, and they're the result of what-if analysis, sensitivity analysis that we've performed on several projects. The real estate projects we're looking at have fundamentals that are actually quite good, but we're seeing these interest rate changes and inflation as a math problem. We can predict that in an inflationary environment, salaries, wages, expenses will eventually catch up to each other and equalize. But in the short term, expenses are rising faster than salary and rent, and we also have interest rates rising faster than income. That higher cost of capital is creating a math problem. Market cap rates that have compressed to extremely low values over the past decade have been the result of low interest rates. I would say the market is addicted to these low rates. When the interest rate on the permanent financing is near the cap rate, then the cap rate becomes irrelevant. Virtually all financing activity will be debt coverage limited, and the borrower will need to bring a very large equity down payment to the table in order to fund the project. In our example, we're going to look at a 200-unit Class A apartment complex. Let's imagine you started your project in late 2021 with a 5% cap rate project and you financed the acquisition with a bridge loan at, say, 6% at 80% loan to cost. In that instance, your annual debt service during the stabilization period would have been just under $2 million interest only. You might have chosen a fairly attractive interest rate for the permanent financing at, say, 3.5%. In that scenario, you could refinance out of your bridge loan at an 80% loan to value, and you could increase your loan amount by $2.6 million when you converted from the bridge loan to the permanent financing. That would allow you to reduce the cash equity in the project and still maintain an 80% loan to value ratio. Now fast forward a year, and you've not quite completed the repositioning. Interest rates for the permanent financing are now 5.5% instead of 3.5%. With the higher interest costs, there is no way you can afford the loan at 80% loan to value the debt coverage ratio would fall below 1, and no lender on the planet will allow you to borrow that much money. You would in fact need to reduce your loan to 65% of value in order to meet the debt coverage ratio. But in order to do that, you'd need to bring an additional $4 million in cash to the table in order to repay the bridge loan and get the permanent financing. Considering the vast majority of loans for value at apartment deals were written with bridge debt, these loans are going to have a very difficult time refinancing borrowers will be upside down and they'll have to raise substantial new capital in order to complete the refinance. Some investors coming in to rescue a project might be vultures. They might extract punitive terms from the sponsor in order to prevent the borrower from getting into a default situation. In our analysis, the interest rate would need to remain below 4.5% in order for the borrower to afford a new loan at 74% loan to value. That's the interest rate that would allow for a refinance that would meet the debt coverage ratio requirement of the lender and allow for a dollar-for-dollar replacement of the bridge loan. If your initial investment involved a bridge loan at 75% of cost, a little bit more conservative, then you could tolerate the interest rates rising up to 5%, and you would need a 70% loan-to-value permanent financing before you ended up upside down. The stable interest rate environment over the past five years, in particular, has encouraged investors to take higher and higher risks with borrowing. But let's imagine that interest rates for the permanent financing go even higher. Let's say they rise to 6%. That's not that far-fetched. In that scenario, the borrower would need to reduce their loan amount by nearly $4 million, and they would need to bring that difference to the refinance in cash. I'm seeing a lot of projects being canceled at the moment as a result of the higher cost of capital. We're entering a dangerous period. That means there'll be bargains on the horizon if you're playing offense, and there'll be pain on the horizon if you're having to play defense. Notice that in this discussion, we have not even discussed whether the cap rates are too high or too low. That's because they're irrelevant to the math when your debt coverage is limited. We've performed these analyses so many times over and over over the past summer, we can almost do the math in our head. 
the implications of that very rapid interest rate increase on the multifamily apartment space could have profound consequences, and we could see a large number of properties going into distress over the next 12 to 18 months. As you think about that, you want to start planning your plan B and plan C in order to handle higher interest rate scenarios. Have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.